Welcome to Steadfast Hope. I'm Steve Lawson, joined by Kent Stainback. We're coming to you from Dallas, Texas, and uh, Herb's House Coffee Shop, and a lot of ministry takes place here, and even one today, right now, Kent, as we are in uh, Genesis 22, verse 3. Uh, the title of this devotion today is Immediate Action. And we're talking about this time when God came to Abraham to test his faith. Mm. said, I want you to take your son, your only son, and sacrifice him as a burnt offering uh, on Mount Moriah. So how will Abraham mm. respond? Well, verse 3 uh, gives us the answer. Mm. So verse 3, so Abraham rose early in the morning, and saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and he split wood for the burnt offering and rose and went to the place of which God had told him. Kent, in verse 3, what really leaps off the page at me is these four words, early in the morning. He rose early in the morning, which indicates there's immediate obedience on the part of Abraham. There's no procrastination. Uh, there's no dragging his feet. There's no delay. There's no putting it off. There is not even prolonged prayer. God has spoken. God has told him what must happen. And all that remains now is for Abraham to act. So he rose early in the morning and made his preparation, saddled his donkey, took two young men with him and Isaac, split the wood for the burnt offering. I mean, he, he, he's ready to sacrifice his son, his only son, and headed out on this journey to the very place where God had specified. And so it was even a specific obedience on Abraham's part. He, he, he didn't go halfway even to Mount Moriah and want to sacrifice him there. He's going to go all the way to Mount Moriah and there offer his son um, unto death. Um, I, I think at times we drag our feet. We know what we're supposed to do. Uh, God has made it clear in his word, and yet we we deliberate, we postpone, and it becomes harder and harder to do what we know we ought to do the longer we put it off, where it would have been better and actually easier if we had just gone ahead and done what God called us to do and specified in his word that, that we should have done. And so Abraham is an example to us um, that we must act on the Word of God as soon as he makes it known to us. And so I think at times we're almost waiting for something to change, uh, waiting for God's Word to change, waiting for the situation to change. Well, the situation might change, but God's Word will never change. And so... Um, this is just a very practical lesson for us to learn, Kent. And so we need to talk about this. Uh, Abraham rose early in the morning. You know, I think about backing up the big picture. Yeah. When God came to Abraham and said, look, the seed will come. It's a promise. Yeah. The seed's going to come through you. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. going to come through your son. <laughs> it's going to come through you, not through... Ishmael, but through Isaac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and, and so you hear that promise, and you know he heard the promise. He's like, great. And then they can't have kids. <laughs> yeah. And then they <laughs> have two, and he goes, no, it's Isaac. Yeah. So, I mean, the context of this is so huge. Yeah. Because is God contradicting? I mean, how many times do we think in our lives God is contradicting himself? Yeah. This doesn't make sense. And so speak about, speak about that in context that what is God trying to teach Abraham and everybody reading this 
in the back of all this of of constantly well she's barren or she can't have kids then she does and then now all of a sudden we're potentially taking him again what's what's god yeah what, what, why such a harsh <laughs> you know i i think we have to fall back on god doesn't always explain mm -hmm. what he's doing yeah. his ways are above our ways his thoughts are above our thoughts as far as the heavens are above the earth so are his ways above our ways. And we just need to know who, which is God, mm -hmm. and what, what he requires. Yeah. We don't have to know why. Yeah. And I think there is an insatiable appetite within all of us. God, I'll do it if you just explain to me why. Amen. Yeah, I, <laughs> like, because I just need to be able to add it up. Yeah, yeah. I need to be able to add it up, then I'm good Help me it. see what you see, and if it yeah. makes sense to me, yes. then I'm all in, okay? Yes. God, you turn your cards over first, yes. and then I'll do it. Yes. And that's just not the way God operates. Um, and that's not the way faith is to respond to God. Uh, faith is the opposite of sight. Yeah. And, and so what's going on here is God is requiring Abraham mm. to trust him in the absence of knowing the backstory, mm -hmm. uh, in the absence of knowing that this is a test to see will Abraham obey. Mm. And, and Abraham, Abraham doesn't know what's on the other side of the veil. Mm -hmm. That at the at the dramatic moment, God will step in mm -hmm. and provide a lamb or a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. Uh, at this point, he has no knowledge of that. It, it is, will you simply obey me? And so I think that's where we find ourselves mm -hmm. uh, so often. And we, we need to remember that God is not... Mm always going to explain why. In mm -hmm. fact, he probably yeah. rarely explains why. Yeah. Um, that we just simply need to know that he's trustworthy mm. and we need to be trustworthy and rely upon his wisdom and his um, His plans for our lives and, and trust him. And I, I think of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your hmm. path. And so it's in the lack of, of our understanding, but just trusting God, who God is and what God has said, that he will then make our paths straight. Yeah. So, and again, Kent, it's, it's easier to teach on yeah. this. Than to be in the crucible of life, yeah. and and to respond in the way that we need to respond, especially immediately, yeah. you know, rose early in the morning. I mean, I can't even imagine. Do you think some of this test had to do with uh, Abraham being chosen, knowing that the seed was coming through him, and God reminding him that it's all of him and not something he'd done or his pride or oh, is there good something insight. is there something involved in that? that that's good insight Kent I, I would have to agree with what you're saying that the fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant would ultimately be unilateral it would be dependent upon God himself mm -hmm. who issued the covenant and not upon God and Abraham or God and Isaac or God and you know Jacob or Joseph or whoever, mm -hmm. but it is in God and God alone. Yeah, we, t we tend to think it's us that are, we're, yeah. we're doing this for God. Yeah, or this is team ministry with yeah. God. Yeah. And, and in a sense it is, but in another sense it's not. It's all of Him. It, it, that it's really all of Him. And I think of Romans eleven thirty six 36, yeah. yeah. for from Him and mm -hmm. through Him and to Him are all things. That's your favorite verse. Steve. It is my favorite verse. <laughs> Can't think. That's why I know it so well. I know one verse. <laughs> no. Um, to him be the glory forever. Amen. So, as God is bringing tests in your life, uh, the question is, will you obey immediately? Will you arise early in the morning and saddle your horse or donkey and take your son, your only son, and then go gather the wood for the mm. burnt offering, mm. and will you head out for Moriah? 
Well, may God give you much grace in your life to do those things that, that are difficult, but are within the will of God for your life. May God greatly bless you today.